Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. I'm going to start by focusing on the golden ratio. What is it? Well, the ancient Greeks noticed that the rectangle that was most aesthetically pleasing to the eye had the following dimensions. Unit 1 in width and uh, 1.618 in height. They called that ratio, 1.618 to 1, the golden ratio. And they denoted 1.618 by the Greek letter phi. Later artists incorporated the golden rectangle in their work. Leonardo da Vinci here is uh, using the golden rectangle to paint the Mona Lisa. He also uh, demonstrated how golden rectangles are the ideal proportion for the entire body in his famous uh, portrait of Vitruvian Man. Okay, so we've got this golden ratio, and um, it occurs in nature, it occurs in art, and we want to relate it to Fibonacci and his famous sequence. Well, let's begin at the beginning, always a good place. And we go to Leonardo Fibonacci. He was the most uh, preeminent mathematician of his time, the late Middle Ages. And while breeding rabbits, he discovered his famous sequence. Why he was breeding rabbits, I'm not entirely sure, but this is basically the experiment that he did in the question that we face today. A pair of rabbits cannot bear young until they are two months old. But once a pair does reach maturity, they will produce one new pair of rabbits each month. If you start with one pair of newborn rabbits, how many pairs of rabbits will you have at the beginning of each month thereafter? Well, let's take a look at this graphically because it's all just a bundle of words here. Okay, here's a fertility chart of rabbits and you see on the left hand side, I've indicated in blue, the number of generations, 1 through 10, and the total number of fertile and infertile rabbit pairs. Okay, Leonardo Fibonacci started off with an infertile rabbit pair, newborn baby rabbits, and I've denoted that with a black X here. By the second month, that pair had become fertile, and I've denoted that with a red X. And in fact, by the third month, that pair produces its own offspring, an infertile black X, uh, a, a pair of newborns. By the fourth generation, or by the fourth month, that pair of newborn has become fertile, but they have not produced baby rabbits yet. And that will occur in the fifth generation. Okay, well let's count our total rabbits and the total number of fertile rabbits. We have 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 51 rabbits by the 10th generation. And if we count the fertile rabbits, we start with 0 in the first month, followed by 1, followed by 1 again, then 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. It's a repetition of that same sequence. Okay, so what, what is interesting about the sequence is that it's a recursive one. A recursive sequence is dependent on its preceding terms. What does that mean? Okay, we'll take the number 2. 2 is equal to 1 plus 1, of course. 3 is equal to 2 plus 1. 5 is equal to 3 plus 2. 8 is equal to 5 plus 3. And so on. You'll find for each uh, term in the Fibonacci sequence that it's equal to the sum of its two preceding terms. Interesting. That's interesting, but not revolutionary. Recursive patterns were known uh, during the time of the Middle Ages. What was so interesting to people at the time was that Fibonacci demonstrated that this was another occurrence of the golden ratio, which we talked about earlier. He took his sequence here, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on, and he divided each term by its preceding term. He said 1 divided by 1 is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2, of course. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. 
And he kept on doing this, and doing this, and doing this, down to the 20th generation. Poor fellow, he didn't have a calculator. And he discovered that the ratio converges to the golden ratio of 1.61803. Now that is pretty neat, and it was pretty exciting to people at the time. And there you have it, the connection between the golden ratio and uh, Fibonacci's experiment on rabbits. I hope you enjoyed.